guys have any questions, please save them until afterwards. You guys can meet with me, with the fellowship. I'll let you know everything you need to know about me. Um, I'm 31 years old. I'm about to be 32 years, 32 years of age by the end of this year. Um, one thing I want to let you guys know is that I wasn't always this way a follower of Jesus Christ. And it took a long time. It took a long process. But you know what? I wasn't fed with a silver spoon my whole life. I was raised very abused, man. I was raised very abused. I didn't have a family that really loved me. Um, and I know that there's a lot of us in here that can kind of relate to feeling alone. To feeling like we have been abandoned in some issues in our lives. And uh, we don't understand why. And we don't understand what is, is going on in our lives right now. And that's what I went through for 12 years. I went through abuse. I didn't know who God was. I knew God was in the church. I thought he was just somebody that was watching me my whole life. And just letting, just letting it happen. Why me, I kept asking. Why me? Why is this happening to me? But you know what happened when I, when I came over? I started abusing drugs. When I got to a teenager, I started letting go of myself. I started saying, you know what? All the pain that happened to me, I'm going to give back to the world. I don't know a lot of us have felt that way. Amen? Have any of us felt that way? You want to give back to the world? If you're so hurt, you just want to give it back. This brother knows what I'm talking about. I know there's a lot of my sister right here. I know. Every, everybody feels that way. Everybody feels like we're left out, right? Everybody feels like, man, you know what? <coughs> I'm just going to do me. Who cares? When you feel like you're in love, and when you feel abandoned, you start feeling, you start respecting, your, you stop respecting yourself, and you start trying to pay back to the world what the world did to you. Amen? And I went through that. I went through that. It was hard. But you know what? Instead of, instead of realizing that I had the free will to choose, right? and I wish I would have known back then what I know now, is that I had the free will to choose. Am I going to let this steal my joy? Am I going to let this world that I'm growing up with make me who I am? Is this going to make me? No, I let it break me. I let it break me. It broke me down to the point where I abused drugs. By the time I was 18, I could try to commit suicide. I took a bunch of sleeping pills because I just gave up. And I actually died for five and a half minutes. And let me tell you, I went to a very dark place, my young brothers and sisters. And to the point where Jesus Christ said, I'm not done with you yet, clearly, loud and clear. And I came out of that place. I woke up in a hospital. All alone. My family wasn't even there for me. And that hurt me even more. I wasn't at the point to the point where I didn't even care about that situation. Now I was going to buy a gun. Now I was going to buy a gun, and I was going to go ahead and put a bullet in my brain. Before I, so I cashed a check for a friend. It was a stolen check. Before I bought that pistol, cops came and arrested me for forgery. The two years in prison. Went into prison. It's no joke. But it was there that I met some Christian brothers. It was there that I found God because I knew who God was my whole life. But I, did I? Did I know who God was? You don't know God until you know the Word. For the Word was God, and in the beginning was the Word, and Jesus was the Word. And until you know who Jesus is, you don't know God. Because we all make God in our own image, but we are created in God's image. So when I got into the Word, that's when I realized who God was. I was a part of it. He wasn't just up on his throne watching, kicking back. Walk, letting everything happen. He was actually giving me the strength to get through. He was there with me the whole time. He was feeling my pain. He was feeling my suffering. He was feeling me. And he knew. And he wanted to tell me that, you know what? You're not alone, my child. I'm here for you. I'm with you. And I realized all that suffering now, if I didn't go through that suffering that I went through back in the day, growing up, those trials and tribulations and temptations, Broken down to the point, it wouldn't have made me the strong man that I am today, amen? Because I'm stronger now than I ever could have been in my life. If I was fed with a silver spoon like this next guy, I wouldn't have had, not him, over there, he's <laughs> But I'm saying, if I was fed with a silver spoon, man, I wouldn't have compassion. I wouldn't have love, and I wouldn't have understanding. I look at somebody who's down, and I say, Psh, sucks to be you. Is that the man I want to be? No. I'm not looking down on somebody unless I'm helping them get up. You see what I'm saying? Because I've been there. Because I've done that. 
And I have compassion and understanding for people who are going through suffering. I've had people in my life tell me that, you know, this guy on the street, bumming, drinking alcohol, I'll never be that way. How do you know? Were you in their shoes? Were you raised their way? Were you sexually, mentally, or physically abused as you grew up? Did you feel loneliness, abandonment? Were you a victim of domestic violence, a witness of murder? Bet not. So how can you say that you would never be this individual? Because you were never forced to make the same choices that they were forced to make. We all have our own lives, we all have our own individuality, but there is one person who calls us and tells us who we are. I know a lot of us don't get that, that, that understanding of who we are. We're trying to figure out what our purpose is in life. What does all this mean? I'm telling you right now, the only thing beautiful, all, everything beautiful comes out of pain. You know, when I'm in that gym, when I'm working out, you got to go through the pain, but then you get the gain, amen? No pain, no gain. Pain and suffering, that's why he says be joyful in all circumstances. A key verse that I understand that he tells me is Romans 8, 28, that therefore all things work together for good for those who love Christ and are called according to his purpose. Many are called. Many are called. Everyone is called, but few are chosen. And right now I'm looking at the chosen ones. Right now I'm looking at the chosen ones. You should be thankful that you have a church right here. That you have a church that's helping you get out of yourselves and know about Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ died for all of our sins. Not just for our sins, but he died so he can take you out of that suffering. So he can say, lean on me. He says, I beseech you therefore, brothers. We were just talking about that in 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is your true spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may prove what is the perfect will of God. Now, we're being tested every single day. Tested, testing our patience, testing our strength, testing, testing, testing. But with every test, you have an opportunity to overcome and be transformed into a better person, a stronger person, stronger than you were before. So you can give testimony to the next individual. The things that you're going through right now, my brothers and sisters, the things that you're going through right now is fuel for your living water you're going to be able to pour out on somebody else. And that's your calling. That's your purpose. To be the lifter of people. To be the light in the darkness. To be the lifter of heads and say, hey, brother, you're not alone. I'm here with you because Christ is in me. And we're all part of the one body in Christ. We're all a part of each other. You're not in this alone. Believe me, you're not. And when I realized that, when I was in my prison cell, and I realized that, man, God's in me. He loves me. He's there for me. And he hurts the same way I do because I'm a part of him. And he's a part of me. And that I have a decision to make. Am I going to let myself control me? Or am I going to control myself? <clears throat> Which one are you? Are you going to let yourself control you or are you going to control yourself? Because I tell you, my whole life, I blamed everybody else. I blamed my family. I blamed my dad for abusing me for 12 years. And giving me drugs after the abuse. I blame my mom for neglecting that from happening. I blame my brother for not backing me up. I was always his older brother when he was my older brother. I blame, I blame everybody else. I blame my dad for, since, man, for so long for the problems I had. But I realized when I grew up and my brother was doing successful when I was still drinking, still abusing, still thinking, man... I had decided the wrong decision. Instead of overcoming and being strong, I was weak. I was a weak-minded individual by letting myself go and letting myself just do whatever this flesh wanted to do. And I realized that the only enemy that I had, the only body I could blame was myself for the destruction I did. Why? Because somebody else did something wrong to me. Must I punish myself? Because I'm telling you right now, when you want to go punish 
When you, you think you're not punishing yourself, you think you're just having a good time, you want to maybe go drink with your buddies when you get older, something messes you up, you want to go party, you want to go smoke some weed, you want to go do something like this, you want to go disobey and be disobedient to God, you know what you're doing? You're staying in your soul, brothers and sisters. You're staying in your soul. The more you get stained, the more it's harder to scrub them stains off, amen? You ain't got no OxyClean. But Jesus Christ can remove those things from you. When you call on Jesus and you say, God, I'm done living for myself. I'm tired of breaking myself. I'm tired. I'm sick. I need you. I need your strength. I need you to help me get through this. He will get you through this. He will get you through every temptation. And you know what? Temptation might not just be that beard. Might not just be that joint. Might not just be that fight that somebody wants you to get into. It might not be that. Temptation just might be doubting yourself. Doubting the Holy Spirit inside you. Doubting the ability to overcome evil with kindness. Overcome evil with good. Belief that you have God inside of you and you can overcome anything. Brother Mike talked about, Pastor Mike talked about that in uh, Corinthians 10.13. He says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. <clears throat> You're not the only one being tempted this way. But God is faithful. And will not tempt you beyond your ability. He will not give you more than you can, can handle. He knows you. He wants to build you stronger. To be his soldiers, to be his warriors. To lift people up. That's what we are, church on the street. We're warriors for God. We've been through it. We've been through the darkness. We've been down. We've grown up with, with messed up childhoods. You know what I mean? We've been through the muck and mire. We've dealt with neglect. We dealt with all that. But we overcame and chose Jesus. And we're choosing to share that message and share that love with our brothers and sisters, letting them know that whatever that adversary is telling you. There's a devil out there. There's an enemy out there. And he'll use people in your life. He'll use machine gun fire thoughts in your head all day long. You're not good enough. Just give up. Who cares? I'm telling you right now, there's a lie from Satan. For God did not give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Self-control. That's in 2 Timothy 1.7. So anything that comes in your mind, we have the ability to overcome it. And he will also provide us a way of escape, amen? amen. That we may be able to endure it and become stronger and not be conformed to it, but be transformed by the renewal of our minds. Yes. Now we have more understanding. Now we have more compassion. And now we can lift, our, lift, we lift everybody else up in the name of Jesus Christ. When we've been there, you're, what you're going through right now is going to make a powerful impact when you get older and somebody else is going through it. You're going to say, hey, brother, hey, sister, I was there. I understand that Jesus Christ is Lord. Follow him. <coughs> Seek him first and all his righteousness, and he will add everything to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God first and all his righteousness and he will add everything to you. Give you the desires of your heart. Delight in him. Know that he is God. Know that he is with you. Know that he loves you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And he's building you up to be something magnificent right now. You, bro. You're being something magnificent right now. You're building up to be something magnificent. You believe that? Yeah. In Jesus' name. You, bro. You're becoming something magnificent. You believe that? Yes, sir. Jesus' name. How about you, sister? You believe that in Jesus Christ? Amen. We're all being built up to be something magnificent, something brilliant. Soldiers, warriors that have a high calling in life. To be successful, to prosper, and to be children, mighty children of God, men and women of valor, overcomers, not overtaken, overcome. So I'm telling you right now that as long as you lean on God and trust the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on, the, on your own understanding. Your mind pollutes you. Get out of your mindset. Get out of yourself. 
When I stopped blaming everybody else for my problems and I learned that it was me, I had free will to choose. Am I going to choose to be upset right now? Am I going to choose to let this destroy me? Am I going to choose to let this take away who I am? A child of God? A good man? Respected member of society? I did for a while. But God is a redeemer. And he will build every bridge that has been burned. Back up, brand new, better than before. He said, I will restore unto you. In Zechariah 9-11, I will restore to thee everything, but with a double portion. Come to God. He will reconcile every relationship. He will restore what has, what has been destroyed in you, in your mind, and around you. That's the grace of God. How many of y'all accepted Jesus Christ in your life, truthfully and honestly? Amen. God bless you all. I want to let you guys know, in 1 John 1, 8-9, it says, we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. See ourselves. We're all sinners. But if you confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Anybody know what righteousness means? Do you guys you know what righteousness means? You know? Anybody? Tell me, brother, what's righteousness mean to you? That's all right. I'm going to let you guys know right now. Righteousness means right standing with God. To be right standing with God. None of us are right standing with God. We all messed up. We all decided to do what we want against God's will. Amen? But because we confess our sins to Jesus Christ, we <laughs> of all unrighteousness. And therefore, we are the righteousness of God. How many of y'all want to receive that tonight? Pray with me. Just say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I accept you as my personal savior. I accept you as my personal savior. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for loving me so much that you died for me. That you died for me. So I can have eternal life. So I can have eternal life with you. With you. Amen. Amen. God bless you all, man. Now all y'all can say truthfully and honestly and declare it every single day that whenever that fear comes in, whenever that temptation comes in, you know what? You can stand firm and you can say, I am the righteousness of God. Say it with me. I am the righteousness of God. One more time. I am the righteousness of God. Can you say it like you mean it? I am the righteousness of God. Amen, bro. Amen. Bro, the righteousness of God. Another brother of ours is great as our educational director. He's doing great things for God. He's been through it. He knows what he knows. He knows Christ so much and so well. And I love this brother right here. I just want to introduce you to our brother Vandell. Yeah.